Now we're going to talk about the actual process of cleaning and disinfecting a multi-use implement, right? That means something that is non-porous, typically made of glass, metal, or plastic. And in this segment, we're only going to talk about things that are non-electric. Um, we'll do a separate segment for things like clippers, but this segment's going to talk about the things that you would disinfect before um, each use. Um, you've met both my assistants here, but um, we're gonna put them to the test here. We're gonna talk about some of the implements that we decided in the previous video could be disinfect, cleaned and disinfected, and how do we do that? It is a rule in every state that you disinfect these items before you use them on a client, um, and that you specifically clean and then disinfect. Remember, it's a two-step process. So I'm gonna pull some things out of my little basket here and let them decide how they want to disinfect them. So in the previous video, we decided that this round brush um, we obviously don't want to throw it in the trash every single time. I'm guessing this is kind of an expensive thing. Um, so we don't want to throw this in the trash. So I'm going to hand it over to Jillian and Jillian's going to make some choices. Now the choices she has for cleaning, and this will be the same for all of the things we're talking about. She can use ship shape cleaner. Um, she can make up a batch of it, have it in a tub, have it in a jar, however she wants it. It's also available in a spray. So she can use that either way. Cleaners don't have contact time, right? So a cleaner, um, all it's doing is removing that surface. Um, if there's oils from your skin or residue from um, hair products you've used, that kind of thing, we want that gone so that the chemical can actually work to disinfect. Another way that she can disinfect is obviously soap and water. We won't go over that because you guys all know how to wash things in soap and water, but that is an option. And then the other option that she has is to use a wipe. Now these are disinfecting wipes, but remember that cleaning is a, um, to some extent, just a mechanical process. So you could use a wipe um, to take off that um, surface um, organic matter and then use a, another wipe if you wanted to or immerse it into a disinfectant for the disinfection piece. So let's go to town with this part. And Jillian, I'm gonna have you go ahead and clean that brush. Okay, um, so I'm gonna use the spray for this one. I'm gonna spray the handle as well. And remember, we're just cleaning right now, so her touching it isn't that big of a problem. She's just getting all of the stuff off of it that might be on it. And go ahead and rinse that off if you don't mind. We wanna make sure we're not mixing our chemicals. All right. And then maybe tap it dry and we're gonna hand it off. Alex? I'm just gonna tap it dry and I think you could probably squeeze in there or do some of the spray as yep. well, but I'm gonna go with the big barbicide so that it has plenty of room to fit inside. Perfect. I'm just gonna submerge it. And it how long are we leaving it in there? 10 minutes. 10 minutes for all of our disinfection, except for our wipes, which are a two minute contact time. And we'll demonstrate those here in a second. All right, how about this item? Nice comb we decided that we could disinfect. I'm gonna let Jillian make a decision how she wants to clean that. So I think the easiest way to clean this would just be to submerge it. And arguably we might have a bigger tub um, that we were putting those in. She's gonna have to do it switching it around to both sides, but um, she's gonna get that good and clean. Remember that she will have already gotten all the hair out of it. Same thing with that brush. We will already cleaned all the hair out of it. We'll already be ready for this step. I'm gonna get it good and clean. Get some of the moisture off of it. And now it can be disinfected. And now I'm just gonna use the spray on both sides. So I'm gonna lay it down and just, if my spray bottle would work. <laughs> Keep spraying. I think it might be turned it's off. brand new. Yep. That's all right. Oh, oh there you go. <laughs> See? There we there go. There you go. Okay. Now you got to spray. Spray it on one side, flip it over. I'm going to spray it on the other side, and then I'm going to let it sit. Perfect. Ten more minutes, right? In ten minutes, that will also be disinfected. All right. How about this guy? It's another brush, but it's a different shape of a brush. So go ahead and disinfect that. So I think we could do, we could submerge it in a tub if we had a tub, but I'm yep. going to go ahead and just spray it. That's an awesome idea. Something I would probably agree with. Remember that the ship shape cleaner, um, because it's a cleaner, it can be used on other things too. Um, you can use it to clean things that you don't need to disinfect, right? If something just needs to be cleaned, um, the, the, the ship shape cleaner is a great way to go. All right, perfect. And now you can make a decision. Um, I'm gonna use this guy. Okay. I'm gonna squeeze it in there. Oh, it's a little too tall, maybe. So. Well, then you, let's try and see. Let's just see. I think that's something other people up. See, now it won't fit. You're yeah. right. So, <laughs> so good I'm idea. Take it out, and I'll just put it with the other brush. All right. Might help to always know like what types of containers you have when you're buying things, or to get different containers. And the last thing we're going to talk about 
is these, your really expensive, nice shears. Sometimes your shears um, are gonna be shorter and sometimes they're gonna be longer, but they're always expensive and they're always something that you wanna take good care of. We talked about when we were deciding whether we can disinfect these that you guys are worried about rust. Um, and the important thing is that these stay dry as much as possible. We do need them to get disinfected. So I'm gonna hand you these shears safely and let you decide how you wanna clean them. So I'm gonna go ahead and just wipe these down. Okay. So while she's wiping them, remember that she's using this wipe, even though it's a disinfecting wipe, she's using it as a cleaner, right? She's pulling off all of the um, residue, all the oils, all the hair product that might be on there on both ends of it, on the shear end and on the handles. And then she's going to let Alex decide Perfect. how she's going to disinfect them. So now she's disinfecting with her wipe. She's going to open them, make sure that she's getting all of the parts of that uh, pair of shears carefully. Mm -hmm. You guys were killing me, pointing them at each other, but that's okay. <laughs> that's the mother and the nurse and me. You're pointing them at each other. Here, here's the shears. And now I'm just going to wipe or wipe. I'm going to put that wipe around the scissor and just set it down open so that it can sit for two minutes. Perfect. So this is the process that you're always going to put in place when you are cleaning and disinfecting. Remember, most states require you to work on a client and put all of your items into a dirty container. And then that dirty container, which should be closed, but for purposes of taping, we're not doing that. So that dirty container goes with you to your dispense um, and you disinfect all those items. And then they go into a clean covered container, right? And that's how you bring them back out to use them again.